adapt or die. It's the law of survival. All living things must live by. We can shake our fists at the sky and demand the world change around us. Or we can find our place in it, shed our skin, and put on a new coat. The only thing more beautiful than this landscape is the fact that shooting surplus makes content like this possible to be captured for you guys. On that note, they are also out there supplying the masses with the kind of gear that you and I are interested in. So head over to Shooting Surplus. Thank you very much for sponsoring this channel, guys. And if you guys use the discount code Dirty Civilian, you can save some cash and uh, a little bit of free money on shipping as well. So thank you, Shooting Surplus, and I also have to thank Wideners, if you guys are looking for 55 grain, 77 grain, even the good stuff, Mark 262, go check out Wideners. They once again make content like this possible. Thank you for the ammo Wideners discount code, Dirty Civilian. For the longest time, I kind of aimlessly just built guns because I would see something like this in a video or on YouTube and I'd be like, wow, that's a super cool gun. I want to build something just like that. And then reality set in in 2020 when I realized I don't necessarily have one gun that's gonna fit a plethora of needs depending on what scenario actually arises. My wife was working in downtown Portland and I was really concerned about having to go get her out of the city riots. Now that we're in rural America, very thankful for that, I've built a different gun with intentional purpose. So let's start on the gun and we'll move to the plate carrier and my medical fanny pack. So the heart of the barrel, the heart of the gun is the barrel and this is a Criterion 14.5. On that, I have a Ripcord Industries LDR-1, uh, Huxworks Flow 556K. I do prefer this on this 14.5 over a Surefire just because it is lighter and it's very quiet on a 14.5, considering the fact that you're still shooting a 5.56. Now, you'll also probably be thinking about the fact that I don't have a laser up here and I'm still considering this a complete rifle build. That's correct. The reason for that is because I have a vampire light out on front, so this Surefire Vampire can swap from white light to IR. I also have passive aiming on the top with this Lupul Delta Point Pro. So I can aim, I can still intensify with light if need be. And then we'll get into some of the other reasons why I have all this extra rail space up on front here. Pressure pad that runs to the rear, ST07 I believe, um, or is it SD00? You can look up the model number for the Surefire. Constant on on the back. The uh, bolt carrier group is a Daniel Defense, 20 round mag because it's a lot nicer if I am shooting in the prone to be able to do that, plus I have a lot of extra ammo on body. The uh, kind of some basic parts of the gun, I really like radian charging handles, Geisley triggers, that's how this thing is, is built out. Tango 6T is becoming one of my favorite LPVOs, I was running a Leupold Mark VI for a long time, which is a great optic, but they're no longer available to the civilian market. I still have it, but I wanted to try something new, as well as the fact that the Army picked this thing up. This one has a BDC reticle in it. Um, I am a big fan and it works awesome in my mind. It runs just like an ACOG, as far as the reticle is concerned, but in a one to six. So pretty stellar option, you zero to 100 yards and all that information lines up really well. Okay, bipod can easily come off if I don't wanna carry all that weight, just quick detach. But I've thought about a few other things on this rifle. So for example, I don't have my pressure pad actually zip tied down to the front. Because I want to be able to shift this over and get it out of the way, I do not own this PVS-30, but after borrowing it from uh, Mac Johnson, I realized that this is a, while heavy, very serious uh, piece of kit that you can throw onto man, pretty much any gun with an LPVO. So because my optic is already zeroed, this can just drop on, move this cap back here, to the front of the gun, I'm sure some of you guys have seen this before. Also, I should probably remove that. I want as much light as possible. Passing through, roll that over. And now I just turned this into a very heavy gun. <laughs> it is chunky, but 
all, all things being considered, it now feels as if this one to six with all my dope, all my data, really good information, reticle holds, all of that now applies to night vision. And I can run a monocular PVS-14 or even if you have dual tubes and passive aim at the top here as well as getting those tubes out of the way and shooting distance with your one to six. I shot this gun out to, I think it was 500 yards. Nick, was it 500 yards at Twisted Barrel with that mover? Was that 300? I think we shot both. In any case, I shot this gun out at some, uh, at some movers, stretched, stretched it out to 800 yards. Pretty awesome gun. This thing works really well for me. So there's the rifle. Now let's go to the plate carrier real quick. You guys, you're probably watching this video because you're interested in firearms. You may also be a little bit concerned about the state of the world. I know I certainly am, and that's also why we started DC. The reality is that body armor and night vision and suppressors are super cool, but that's not gonna feed your family if you need to actually stay alive. I recently heard that if all trucking stopped or for any reason fuel were to be cut out, it would take 24 to 48 hours for all grocery stores to be pretty much picked clean. Now with that in mind, you need to have some food on hand and be prepared. And with all of the other ads that we could be reading, I genuinely believe in this one. My Patriot Supply is a company that all of us at DC at some point have invested in. So prepare with DC.com. If you head to that link, it will save you $200 on their three month food supply as well as free shipping. My Patriot Supply offers uh, calorie dense meals. They're actually pretty tasty. They have a shelf life that's gonna last significantly longer than just putting some meat in your deep freezer and hoping that it lasts. So once again, My Patriot Supply, go to preparewithdc.com. It's gonna save you $200 on a three month supply of food as well as free shipping. The standalone plate carrier itself is a JPC 2.0. Um, I have HESCO L210s on the inside. Awesome armor. I am playing with some West Coast armor at the moment, some level fours that look very promising. Excited to actually do some, not tests, but experiments. Uh, so this Blue Force Gear uh, Whisper Pouch allows me to kind of treat this as a GP pouch. A lot of your Molly on or Velcro on uh, kind of shingles or placards that you put onto plate carriers can sometimes limit you to just P mags. So having a little bit of elastic on the front means that I can throw, yeah, extra mags or gloves or P mags or pistol mags, whatever it is, and have some versatility. Up on the top here, I have something to write on, something to write with, and I do have a little bit of dope for the rifle with 55, 62, and 77 grain if I do need that. Of course, right in the rain pen. Um, if you do need a compass, I know a lot of people will sometimes wonder, okay, when, well, what scenario? Are you reading a map? What do you need this for? Okay, let's say that there's a really horrible scenario and you know that you walked a certain direction away from the highway to go help a friend, and you're on the phone or you're on the radio, what side of the highway are you on? We're on the right side. Going northbound or southbound? Going northbound. Just having a little bit of direction finding helps a ton. Okay, digging into my GP pouch. It's the little things that are super nice, but we have iPro, we have lenses, we have pieces of night vision, and having something clean that you can use to actually wipe stuff off with is pretty smart. Getting into the guts here, something to wipe my face off with if I need to. Um, <laughs> if you wanna get something where you can read animal tracks or actually memorize what stuff actually looks like, you can totally do that, but just a little green bandana. Sharpies, two is one, one is none. A lighter, because who doesn't need a lighter? And a pickle, because you gotta make it funny. Aimpoint is starting to come out with stuff like um, the Acro or the, I think it's the RDS, the new, the new rifle dot, where you need to actually have a T10 or maybe it's a T15 bit, where you actually just take the Aimpoint tool and, and use that. So because I'm zeroing stuff on the range all the time, that's just nice to have. Surefire, red headlamp. The one thing that I don't like about this, I've said this before, it's a great headlamp, except for the fact that the red system means that you have to remove this plastic piece. Okay, great, I took that piece off. Now what do I do with it? I'm gonna throw it in my pocket and sit on it and break it or lose it. It's kind of a pain. I probably wouldn't buy this one if I was gonna go buy another red headlamp. A multi-tool, you should probably have one on your primary piece of kit. And then batteries, make sure you're waterproofing your batteries. I have enough in here to run my night vision for a month. <laughs> which is a lot, um, as well as this little bag was actually designed to run for this rifle. So I can replace all of the batteries on here twice, which is awesome. 
and then electrical tape if you do need that, good to have. That completes that. I know that I need to upgrade my radio, but this Beofang still lets me talk to people, talk to my friends. If there's a tornado or civil unrest or whatever the case may be, I at least have a way to communicate and or listen into news and weather. That also runs up to my PTT that I can plug into my Opscore amps, whether they're on my helmet or just over my head. On the right hand side, I have a tourniquet. That is not a complete medical system, but I'll explain why I have only a tourniquet here at the moment. Let's spin around to the back. So this pack is mollied on, and that does mean that I can't exactly dig into here and find stuff. If I want to throw a bunch more parts and pieces into the bag, I have to take my plate carrier off to really get to it. I can't reach back there on my own. I could have a buddy do it, but if I'm on my own, I'm screwed. The upside is it's small and compact, so I could throw a backpack on over the top if I needed to. In the inside, I don't have any water in here at the moment, but in the inside, I do have a source hydration bladder. So if I want to carry water and fill this thing up, I can certainly do that. I can run that hose down to the front and have drinking water. Okay, so that kind of completes the plate carrier. Let's go to what I would do for medical. I'm a dad, which means I like to mow grass with my lawnmower, my Cub Cadet ZT1. I'm also a man with a beard, so I like to scape my beard. Uh, which is pretty awesome because when we heard that Manscaped wanted to sponsor this, we were all in. Right now, with the code Dirty Civilian, you can get 20% off pretty much everything at their store. They have the Lawnmower 4.0. They also have the Beard Hedger for all of you who need to hedge your beards and scape your manliness. So hit them up, manscaped.com, Dirty Civilian, 20% off, plus free shipping. So the reason that I have gone to a fanny pack is because I can grab this and put it on pretty much no matter what I'm doing. If I have no armor and I, no rifle and I'm just wearing EDC, I can throw this on. I can throw this on like a dumb satchel, a man purse if need be. If I'm wearing a chest rig, a plate carrier, I can give this off to someone and now I'm not taking it away from my plate carrier. This is a standalone piece of kit that can go on no matter what it is that I'm doing. Obviously a tourniquet that I can quick deploy and get to on the front, I have small little comfort pieces. Out here in Tennessee, we have ticks. If, uh, if you get a splinter or something like that, and if it's a pain, tweezers are wise. I have another pen, a Sharpie, Band-Aids, and Neosporin. I should probably waterproof those now that I'm thinking about that. And then on the inside, some more of a uh, personal IFAC. Secondary tourniquet, which now brings me to three in total. I have four limbs. The idea for IFAX is typically that you carry what is going to be used on you. Now that's the idea for the military and law enforcement. But man, if I need to use this for someone else, I will. I'd rather have more tourniquets if I give one away and it leaves with that person. Trauma shears, make sure you have the ability to find wounds if you need to, cut someone's clothes off if you have to, and then a full blowout kit for the most part. I don't have an NPA or an OPA in here. I have other ways of controlling airways if need be. This is really just a stop the bleed and try to stabilize someone if need be. Now again, a 14.5 with night vision capabilities, uh, some general purpose tools, whether it's gloves or uh, extra batteries, red headlamp, and then armor to protect me. Comms, I know I need to beef those up. There's always something you can be working on. That is, that is my full system. If I had to grab something and run with it and I didn't know what scenario was actually gonna hit me, this is probably what I'd be going with in middle America, rural Tennessee.